Hello, welcome to Who's Views, and this is Visitations. This is where people that we know who are part of the channel all get to go out and about to see what's happening out there in the world of Doctor Who. And as you can see on this one, I'm joined by Paul, and he's joining us to tell us all about a latest science fiction convention. Hello, Paul. Now, you're here to tell us all about a recent science fiction convention. Hello, yes, I am. And and I don't go out much, so that was quite good. So I was out... out um being a bit of a fan which was lovely to be out uh meeting as, as i've got there in my little thing i met i met paul mcgann which was you wonderful. met paul mcgann fan. yeah <laughs> well you can tell us all about that in a second but first of all i want you to tell us about now this was that whereabouts in edinburgh was this well it's a place called the edinburgh corn exchange which is a a huge uh f- sort of function space and uh, it's used for weddings beer festivals and conventions it seems now as well so it's a lovely lovely space uh, it looks huge paul it's massive the times i've been there um, i went to a beer festival once organized by camera and had like a jazz band on they had stalls selling food and uh, collector's items for beer nerds and all that kind of stuff so it's, it's an yeah. interesting space lovely yeah yeah it does look absolutely fantastic I mean, you know, when you look at this up on the internet, because I had to look up where this was, and just thought, wow, look at all this. And it looks very adaptable, because I mean, that picture there as well is obviously set up from some sort of awards dinner or something like that. Yeah. But to find that you can also, you know, get a, a science fiction convention in there, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. You know, it's lovely, and they've got a bar in there, and there's lots of spaces for eating. Always important. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always important, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so it's nice, and... um I met a lot of like I went I went I have to say I went on my own. I was going to go with other people, but then that never uh, materialized. And I was in two minds whether I was going to go or not because I didn't want yeah. to go on my own. But I thought I'm going to go. So and I thought and I did. It was great. It's lovely. And I met <laughs> lots of nice like-minded fans. There was lots of uh, uh, you know people dressed in costume for Doctor Who and various other sci-fi classics. I, what I I really was chuffed was I met Chewbacca briefly. <laughs> uh, plain Chewbacca. But I saw a news story which really tickled me was uh, the person who made the Chewbacca costume had made the costume the far from collecting hair extensions to make a Chewbacca costume, which I thought was fantastic ingenuity. I thought really brilliant. What the original Chewbacca costume? No, this fan's costume. And it oh, the fan's like I was going to say, wow, oh, goodness me. But it well, looked, I suppose it is. It looked like the real thing. It looked like a real Chewbacca <laughs> costume made from hair extensions, but I thought it was fantastic. It's always bizarre when you see that Chewbacca walking around, isn't it, really? You just think, oh, look, I, I always think of Carrie Fisher and that line, the walking carpet. It just makes me laugh. Now, yeah, listen, you, exactly, yeah. That, what, there was an awful lot. We've got the cover of it. Now, this was the program that went with the actual event that you've sent me here. So it was the Capital Sci-Fi Convention 2024 up there in, in Edinburgh. And this is the program. What strikes me about the cover of this program, though, is there's no representation for Doctor Who on it at all. And yet you're saying there that McGann was actually one of the, 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 the biggest draws of the event. He was. He was very, very popular. There's quite a few different people there. What for me was interesting, I've never been to a, a kind of mixed sort of genre convention. When yeah. I've been to conventions in the past, there's always Doctor Who. So for me to have that mixture of there was obviously there was uh, people dressed as Star Wars characters. There were uh, the Buffy characters. There were... Uh, um, someone dressed as Captain Jack Sparrow. There was lots of different things. So it wasn't just Doctor <laughs> Who, which for me was uh, a bit bizarre because I was looking at all the Doctor Who things. So yeah. there's, there was a, a quite a large Doctor Who presence. There was not just new. There was people dressed as Tennant, dressed as Capaldi. There was a couple of Jodies there as well. Say no more about that. There was also uh, um, lots of Toms, which was great. Lots of Tom Baker, uh, fourth Doctor fans as well, which was really lovely. And there's mm. lots of kids there. What I did really made me laugh was there was a stall that had um, character options, Doctor Who figures in them. Like All a, right. And there was, there was a. I was trying to find. I wanted to track down the death of the Daleks. Daleks for me because I've not got those ones. And yeah. they're really lovely figures. And I couldn't see any. There wasn't much Doctor Who merchandise at all at this event. But there was mm. this kind of big plastic tub with loose uh, option figures in them. And this yeah. little kid, about seven or eight, with his mum, was rummaging through them, trying to find a Matt Smith, which really made me laugh. I thought that was really lovely. This wee kid's oh. still into Doctor Who even now, but he's looking for a Matt Smith. I, thought was really well, I hope nice. you found one. 
So do I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they are around, aren't they? You just have to look yeah. and look and look. That's part of the fun, though, at that age as well, isn't it? You, you might be disappointed if you don't find the one you're after, but it, it means the adventure goes on. Well, when I was a kid, I used to go to Jumble Sears quite a lot, and you pick up the odd Doctor Who jigsaw puzzle or an annual or something like that. So it's the same kind of idea, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah it really is. So there were uh, how many people were there, roughly, do you think? It's hard to say. It was a two-day event. Right. Um, I would say certainly a good few hundred people were there, certainly, yeah. Um, when, I, when I queued for McGann, it was quite a long queue. He, he had one of the longest queues, and, and they gave us like a, um, a kind of – a raffle ticket to come back because they had to give him a break in between signings and stuff. I would so say, yeah. We had to kind of say, well, we, can you come back in 10 minutes, half an hour, and we'll give you a ticket, we'll give you a call if uh, uh, when, when we can restart the queue again sort of thing. And uh, <laughs> so that was fine. But we're all fans because we're all a bit, a bit anal. We just hung about and waited till our turn, basically. That's why I did. <laughs> because they said they were, going, they were going to announce it on the tannoy, but it's very noisy. There was, like, there was an orchestra playing at one point. Oh, right. Uh, and play music, kind of um, sort of fantasy themes like Star Wars, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then in between well, that, that time, it was lovely, yeah. And in between that time, they had panels with the actors having a little chat with a with a presenter, and then they'd open up to Q and A for half an hour. And Paul did one of them, which was quite fun too. So uh, there's a lot going on. Um, but I say uh, maybe two or three hundred people, maybe more. I'm not sure. I wasn't really counting, but it was quite busy. I have to say, yeah. And, and was McGann there for the two days? He's there for both days, yeah. I only went wow, for the first okay. day, but yeah, he's there yeah, for both yeah, days, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So who else was there apart from him? Now, I've got a list of this, because I don't remember off my top of my head, but Jimmy V was there. All oh, right. And uh, I watched his panel, and he was talking about, um, you know, Vanna Cavalata and the Moxable, who know, that kind of stuff. But he yeah. was there, and another lady who does similar work to him, uh, if I can find the list here, and uh, she plays sort of um, characters like he does sort of thing. Her name was Artie Shah, who they did a panel together. They were quite fun, talking about their experiences in big, uh, in little costumes and prosthetics and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no fun. Um, Paul Freeman was there, an actor who's been lots of things, but he was in Indiana Jones, the first Indiana Jones movie. Um, Angus uh, McInnes was there. He was a, I think he played a, a rebel X-Wing fighter, pilot in the original Star Wars. Dennis Lawson was there as well. Yeah. Um, James McKenzie, who played the Raven in a kid's show, uh, he was there. Um, and a couple of the people didn't recognise a guy called Steve uh, Cardenas, I think his name is. He was uh, um, one of those... Um, I forgot what... I, I, I mentioned earlier, I forgot what they're um, The colourful <laughs> Japanese um, superheroes. I forgot what they're oh, the Power Rangers... Power Rangers, yes, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And a, a guy called David Ajala, who um, I didn't recognise who he was, but uh, so there's a lot of people there, and they had what I did find interesting about it. I've not been to a convention for a while, as I think I mentioned already, but the uh, yeah. it was very business like. It was very like this is a business. We're making money here, you know. Mm -hmm. What they did have though, that uh, you probably see on the program, they have a it was uh, the sp uh, sponsoring a charity called the Children's hospice across Scotland. So it's for children who have uh, cancer related diseases. So there's, there is a, a kind of um, a bit of a, a charity aspect to it. How yeah. much goes to charity, I don't know, but at least they're doing something like that, which is a worthy cause, which is good. Yeah. I mean, it, they have changed, you know, they, they, I mean, gone are the, or, or rare, let's say, are the homespun conventions that we grew up with and we knew. And because it's so much bigger now, because we have gone down this American route in the United Kingdom of the Comic Con thing where everybody's thrown in. Uh, you know, sometimes I look at these things, like the one you've just been to, and, and because it is run like a business, and it is a business, and you can sense that as well when you get in there, you know, sometimes I think the magic's gone for, for the younger ones. I mean, I'm so lucky that I was around when I was around and going to the conventions in the late eighties and then through to the nineties when they were just actually homespun really. And yeah. they were a little bit more, I mean, you went to a doctor who convention and it was a doctor who convention. You would meet other doctor who fans, yeah. you know, and now because it's just all these, a lot of them and especially the big ones, it's very corporate. It is very, I, I sometimes, I, I, I've been to a lot of those myself, actually, and I've worked at a lot of them, and I do feel that the magic has gone. And when you're yeah. working at them, the pressure is definitely there. 
you know. Well, fast, when, fast, I, when, fast, I, fast. Well, when I when I when I went to conventions in the eighties, when I was uh, more active in that department, I remember one convention we had here in Edinburgh. Um, we met Turn Sticks was there. Remember the time of the Five Doctors, or just prior to it, Turn Sticks was there. John Levine, Richard Franklin, and we got to chat to him in the bar informally yes. and have a chat. Yeah. Now yeah. it's like top security. You can't speak to the celebs because they're all being sh- uh, moved about and all that kind of stuff. So it's a bit mm-hmm. a bit trickier, which is a shame because it's nice to have a, a chat with Paul McGann over a pint. It would be lovely, you know, but uh, not to have Yeah, it. It, it does seem that those days have, have, have really gone, doesn't it, really? Yeah. You know, yeah. and, you know, but... I, but... That we do, we do still in the UK have certain ones like that now. You know, the, the the smaller ones, and that's good. And long may they they run because they are important. Because it's you've got it's great to have that interaction with people from these shows, isn't it? It's been you know I remember them very fondly being able to sit in the bar or getting stuck in a lift or whatever, <laughs> having breakfast, <laughs> having yeah, breakfast yeah, or dinner yeah. with these people, and it, and it was encouraged really. And you all became part of that lovely sort of what we now call the family, but it's not the same yeah. anymore at all. Now you have sent me some other pictures as well. Now there is this one of you arriving at the comic, um, the, 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 the sci-fi comic yes, thing. Yes. This is you arriving there, isn't it? So you've parked very neatly there, I think. I like to travel in style. My parking is better than most doctors, I have to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was, uh, she, the old girl, as she can be called, I hope to call her still the old girl, uh, she was easy to control. That was fine, yeah. That's good. Isn't it? <laughs> and was this in the main reception area or where, where was the, the, the box located? This was kind of um, just bizarrely near, near the bar, which is interesting. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it was, as you come in the main door, um, there's kind of two entrances one that goes to the courtyard bit as well. So you go through a little channel with the bar is, so it's quite near the entrance. It wasn't too far. And there's a Cyberman standing there next to it as well, a friend of Yeah, we've got that. Macbeth. We've got this here as yeah. well. I was going to say there as well, um, it, you know, in my in my experience, there's nothing <laughs> nothing bizarre at all about any Doctor Who fans being near the bar. <laughs> no, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but interesting, the gentleman there, um, he's a friend of mine on Facebook, I hadn't seen him for a while, and oh. I've known him through fandom, uh, and he's in the Cyberman uh, costume. A shout out for a, a gentleman called Doug Macbeth, who is a, a lovely man. Um, but he was saying in that costume, it was this even in February, he was very, very hot in that. Oh, costume. really? Yeah, he was absolutely sweltering oh. away. So well, good, good on you. Good, good, good on you. Good on yeah. Doug for doing that. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Perfect. Good on yeah. you, Doug. Yeah. And were, were, were the children attracted by these things? I mean, obviously, let's just look at the Dalek there as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a lovely looking Dalek as well. So, you know, um, but yes. Well, I mean, bizarrely, we're... just to cut co- co- uh, to, to court controversy, that's the Dalek from the Children Need Special uh, from Davos. Oh, is it? Yeah, because I had a mm. conversation with a man who was uh, standing next to it, who was collecting for charity, and we had a, a little chat about Davros Gate. So that was interesting. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it's always interesting, yeah. that one, isn't it? I've noticed, though, that it doesn't seem to have the plunger on there. So that would explain that if it's from the story, the continuity of the story. Yeah, because I... it would have had that bizarre clamp thing they had in the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, say, I say story there, who viewers, you know, to be kind, story. Yeah. That. Absolutely. Literally termed as a story, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're any. I'm interested. Were any of the little the little ones um, into the Dalek and the Cybermen? Did they notice they were there? Well, when I was wandering about, because I had to wait in between times for different things happening, because there was a okay. began panel, then there's a photo shoot, all that kind of stuff. So I wandered around, and there's lots of kids in the police box, out the police box, standing by the Cyberman. You know, so there, there were oh, right. there was some interest in it. Yeah, even though the competition from Darth Vader and Stormtroopers, and R2-D2, and all that kind of stuff, they were still interested in the Doctor <laughs> and his enemies, which is great. That was really encouraging. It is. It's it's nice to hear, isn't it, in these days where we know that the show is not necessarily as popular in the UK as it was. Um, yeah. Whatever anybody says, it's not really, is it? We, I mean, we talk about that a lot on this channel, so it's nice to see that. But no, it looks like... It's all, so let, let's move on to the, 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 the big thing here. We let us, you, you got to meet the Eighth Doctor himself. You got to meet McGann. You've been wanting to meet him for quite some time, I know. I have, yes. I'm a huge yeah. fan of Began. I really am. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the Big Finish audio he does, and I think he's got a great voice, and I could listen to him for hours. And he just seemed really warm, really nice, nice guy. You know, he, uh, as we've had the conversation before, GT, he wasn't, he, he's quite a shy man, so he wasn't overly yeah. chatty, but he was really, really nice and yeah. warm to me. And the first thing he said to me, what's your name? I said, Paul. And we both laughed how, how nice a name it was. It's a good name, isn't it? Blah, blah, blah. That kind of <laughs> stuff. You know, and I had a, a, a laugh about the fact that we uh, had the same name. That was really nice. And um, and he, he, uh, I got him to sign my copy of Regenerations, the Guy Russell book, um, 
Uh, there we are, yes. A lovely autograph. Now, it's hard. If I didn't know I'd met Paul McGann, it's hard to make out who it actually is from. But uh, <laughs> it's, great to have the, it's great to have the autograph. And he's Absolutely. marked it, I think, as uh, he's marked it with uh, Roman numerals of eight. So yes. you know which, which one it was, which is a nice touch, I thought. Well, I, I, from, from what I've seen, a lot of them are doing that now. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Tom does it now, four, Colin's doing it with six, you know, I think Peter's doing it now with the five. So they're, yeah. they're all sort of doing it now. They sort of seem to have fallen into line with that for some particular reason. Oh, I'm Dr. Number whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very, it, it, it is odd, but I, I don't know. It's, it's just, you should, my um, um, uh, opinion, you should just sign at the doctor. You just, because well, you are. Like I showed you with my pescatones with Tom, it's got Doctor Who question mark, Tom Baker. Yes. You know, lovely. So, yeah. And, but, yeah. And Colin used to do that as well, didn't he? Colin Baker, yeah. who? <laughs> well, that, well, that's quite nice that you know um that he's, he signed that there and we've got the picture of you with him here so that's a nice picture as well so was that your sonic screwdriver is it his <laughs> it's his it's his oh. uh uh which is interesting he had a prop with him and he had several sonics <laughs> for, for the for the photo shoot as well so this is a, a selfie so i've got three or four of these with me being caught trying to smile really badly. So I thought it'd be, I think I was slightly in shock in this one, to be honest. But uh, why? <laughs> why? Why were you in shock? Well, you know, it's like, it's funny. I'm not, I'm not generally not over, overwhelmed by, by, by sort of celebs and stuff, but I just got a bit kind of like, I felt it was like it was five again a little bit because it was Paul McGann. It was just weird. So I got a bit <laughs> unnecessary and a bit shy, I think, to be honest. Is you? <laughs> oh, bless yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> I bless you. That's, that's quite sweet in a way, isn't it, really? I'm very I'm impressed, Ian, Mr. McGann, Ian that you've got your own sonic screwdriver. That's well, very, I, very strange. I know I don't have one Sonic. I don't have a Sonic. That's that's true. I don't. Uh, I really should have, but that, I'm not collecting those. That you've got to stop some. I know you don't. You've got everything, but I, I kind of uh, you have to stop somewhere, don't you? But uh, no, I, no. I was saying I'm, I'm surprised that McGann's got one. All right. So yeah. Um, mm. Well, he had it. He had it with him on his table. Whether they provided it for him, I have seen him uh, with his costume on at different events, and he has got a Sonic. So maybe he's got his own one. Maybe he has. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he popped to B and M to buy one. Who knows. Can you still get them? <laughs> yep, you can still you can. get them. They're, they're out and about there. You can absolutely still get them. You know the retailers to go to. <laughs> absolutely. So you can get all that. So that was that was your your selfie one there. And this yeah. was the official one, wasn't it? Which was had all these extra bits added onto it. Yeah, this is the interesting. It's like the sort of things you get when you go to Alton Towers. It's a bit that kind of, kind of idea, yeah. you know. Um, but it's interesting. I noticed in the photograph afterwards, I wasn't holding the Sonic screwdriver the right way around. I thought, that's interesting. It's yeah. like... Uh, uh, McGann and McCoy in the movie do the same thing. They use it the wrong way around, um, but, which is a nice tribute. But this is interesting. Um, Paul had the two Sonics, the one he's got, which is a bit of a, it looks a bit like the um, the River Song one that she gets in Silence in the Library. And he's got the, the classic one that I've got. And he offered me the, the River Song one. I, I said to him, can I have the other one? He said, yes, of course you can. I like a man who knows he knows what he wants, and that was that. That was it. And so I got the. the so I didn't want to say to him, "I don't want the rubbish one. I want the good one." <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kept that to myself. But I want the real yeah. one. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he knew there. I wonder if there was an internal smile, as it were. You know. Probably. Yeah. yeah probably. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, I, yeah. I'll have the proper one. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, you you yeah. have the you have the rip off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so um so these were good. I mean, let's have a look at this. So you got this. Which was the autograph there? You got a selfie, yeah, and then you got this official one with all these graphics added to it as well. Now, you and I are both from an, an age of Doctor Who fandom where you could get autographs and the, the very rare photographs that we used to have. We didn't really carry cameras back in those days because they weren't certainly in our phones. We didn't yeah. have mobile phones back in those days, have to say. Um, you know. But we're from a, a convention circuit at the time where they didn't charge you for anything. There was no fee to scribble their, their signature on, on into a book or onto a DVD cover or a VHS cover or whatever it was going to be. And bearing in mind that, as I say, you've got the selfie, you've got the official one, you've got the autograph. So how much was this? How much did it cost you? Well, um, firstly, you've got your entry ticket as well. To yes, yeah, so how much was that's that? That's £15 plus... I did, I did it online, so you had a booking fee of one pound fifty or something. So it was sixteen pound fifty just for one day. There. For one day, yeah, yeah. For one so, day, yeah. So, okay. Um, I was when I when I got my autograph and my selfie, I put my coat down near each table, and as I was going away, I caught a poster. So I have a little bit of a souvenir which oh, yeah. I got. 
And this <laughs> is the cost. This is the cost, as you can see, of all the prices on it. And that's. And is that, that is that is that McGann's handwriting at the bottom there saying cash I'm only? Ho I'm hoping it is because that's an extra autograph for that's a, This is a. This is an investment in itself, so this is worth the, worth the cost. It, it could well be, you know. So let's have a look at that. For Paul McGann, his photo shoot was £40, and that's the one with yeah. all the little graphics and stuff, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's that yeah. one. Yeah. And then we've got there, the autograph was £30, and the selfie was yeah. £20. Yeah. So you spent a bit of money just for that yeah. bit of time yeah. there with Paul McGann. How long did you get with him? Well, um, you could be with him as long as you wanted. I was probably there for five minutes, really, to be honest. We just chat a little bit, and you kind of... Uh, get signed stuff, you pose for the photographs. The photo shoot itself was very brief. I mean, I got to shake his hand. I said to him at the the um, the um, autograph, I said, how do you do the photo shoot? He said, I need to book around the corner. He said, I'm, I'm sure if you speak to him, we'll fit you in. I said, great. And uh, when I went to do the photo shoot, photo shoot, he said to me, oh, you made it, fantastic. So he remembered me, that was nice. So, um, oh, good. Uh, so so I take it that's in front of a green screen, Paul? Yeah, the green screen. So it's like a proper photography type place uh, yeah. section they do in, in the venue. And the interesting thing was, I couldn't believe it, though, I had to wait for ages to get my print off of my photo. And I thought, oh no, I've all, it's the first time I've done this and it's going to go tits up, you know, and no, it took ages yeah. to do it. And I thought, never, I'm going to have to do it again or Paul's going to go away and I want to not see him. So eventually I did get it. But it took ages to get. Well, let's have another look at it. I mean, yeah. I suppose it took ages because they're adding all the graphics onto it, and they would have had a backlog, I suppose. Because if you're saying the queue was 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 um, astronomical for him, I suppose a lot of people spend their hard-earned cash on on getting this. You know. Well, that, um, well, that's it. I think I think I was really pleased. It was very popular. Um, but the bizarre thing about the printing off was, um, the people um, behind me got the photograph before me. Which was weird because I'd I'd been before them, so I don't know what happened with the something with was the, going on there. Then, yeah, wasn't some, it? <laughs> some glitch was happening. Some gremlin was some getting in. Yeah. Well, but at least you got that through as well. Would you say that you know for the autograph and for the for for the selfie for the official photograph and the chance of getting a few minutes to talk to him was it worth the the, the money you put into it? I think it was probably a little bit pricey than it should have been, to be honest. But I thought. This is a probably lifetime opportunity to to meet him, and yeah. I really wanted to. So it's worth it for that and for the the brief memory I had. But I think probably it was a wee bit uh, uh, pricey, to be honest. I think, but yeah. I did enjoy the experience. He's a lovely guy, really warm, really nice guy, and nice to meet him. And I've got a lovely memory of this, which is great. But I do think it's. I think the selfie charge was a wee bit cheeky, to be fair. But at least they tell you what what what's there. They don't. They don't you know, lure you in, then you have to pay for it. So at least you know before you start what you're getting. Yeah. But, um, That's fairly but, standard in the conventions yeah. now as well, because yeah. the, the yeah. tends to be when you get into the line to actually meet the um, the actor or the writer or whomever it's going to be, they tend to have posters out beforehand to say this is how much their costs are. And certainly with social media now as well, they, they should be putting out the cost before you even go. Because some people, yeah. you know, have to budget for this and you have to save up. Yeah, yeah. They are, it does. I mean, when you've got loads of actors in one place, there. And imagine if you want to see all of them. Yeah, that's it. I mean, if I, if I, I mean, I did think I did toy with going to see Jimmy V. I think he was cheaper, but uh, yeah. um, I thought no, I, I just want to see him again. If there's another doctor there, if Colin was there or Peter, I may have considered it. But you know, it's it's it's, it's not cheap. You know. But, well, it's certainly not cheap if you get more than one doctor in the same area yeah, at the yeah. same time. That really goes mad um, <laughs> when it comes to the costing. So you were there for the... Did you stay long in the, for the day? Were you there for a few a good few hours then with all this going on? Well, I think to give it a wee bit of time to... I arrived about quarter past ten, I think. It, the doors opened about ten o'clock. Ah. Um, I met McGann sort of before lunchtime. And then... Um, I went to do the photo shoot after that. It was about an hour or two after that. And then there was a, there was a, he did a panel um, for half an hour as well, which was quite nice. Uh, and so I watched that. So I was there from about quarter past 10 till about three o'clock. So about, maybe about five hours or so. That's not bad. That's not yeah. bad then, is yeah. it really? I mean, it is, it's, it's a good day when you're just walking around and it's in the cold and you're, you're waiting yeah. for stuff and what have you. I, I, most of that time is spent queuing as well. Did he say anything at all in his panel of interest? Anything well, we don't know? Well, not, nothing he didn't know, but he said um, was interesting because, you know, in our, our spin-off show, we talked about our McGann series. He did he did mention that, you know. Uh, oh, really? He did, yeah, he didn't want to start a rumour, but he said that 
any, and this is interesting, his take on it, uh, that um, any time the show's history, because of the way it's written now or the way it's working in terms of spin-offs, this would be the ideal time to, to get the call to do one. He said he would drop everything if he got the chance, he said. Which is, uh, but obviously- basically, he's sending a big message to Wales there, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. To say, look, I'm available. <laughs> if yeah. you're going to do it, do it now. Um, it's unlikely, though. It's unlikely, but, but, but it was nice that he, he thought like that. And he said he would do it in a heartbeat, to be fair. But what was very funny was he couldn't remember Russell's name, <laughs> which is not a good start. He said, um, I was thinking about, um, and he said, Terence Trent Darby, the singer, rather than Russell T. Davis. And everyone <laughs> laughed. And he said, you remember uh, um, Trent, Trent Darby, blah, blah, blah. And they chatted, they chatted about that, you know, and it was really funny. Yeah. And then he said, I mean, Russell T. Davis, blah, blah, blah. And he just did talk more about it. But it was really funny him thinking about, you know, the, the kind of initials, you know, being sort of similar to Trent, Trent Darby, which I suppose it is really. But, yeah. <laughs> I suppose in a sense. He's, he's mad. <laughs> he is mad. He's, he's, he's very eccentric, I have to say, and he's really... He's, he's, he's quite he's quite silly and quite daft, which is lovely. He's nice, but I guess he's very very warm, nice guy. And I think uh, I'll be I'm, really, I'm glad I met him. Now I can say mm. I met him, which is lovely. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was nice that he did the panel as well because sometimes you don't get the opportunity, which is fine because of course they do make money on the on the, on on the photographs and the autographs and the selfies. They make money on that. Don't you? That that goes yeah. that goes to them. Um, and they get the fee to go along as well. So it's 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 nice of them if you can get the chance. To do the panel, to do the panel. I think that's. I think it's brilliant, and that format is is more or less where we're at now, isn't it? It's that sort of stuff. There's a a, a, a formal panel, and the ability to meet the people now, and so that they can earn some extra money while they're there. And that's where that's where we seem to be now, doesn't it? That seems to be what's what's happening. Well, I was looking um, sort of on Facebook recently, and there's lots of adverts for upcoming events, and there's one. I think down down south somewhere, sort of down Plymouth Way, there's a, I think one with Colin, Nicola and Sophie and other people as well. Similar kind of idea. So there's lots of them all around the UK. So yeah. look out for one near you. You'll find someone you maybe want to, to meet, but uh, save up. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. That's what we have to say to everybody where you can, because these things can be very, very expensive. But, you know, yeah. there you go. After the big... 60th anniversary year where they were all busy all around the world it's nice to see that it's not as because you know, i was expecting it to get a little bit quiet this time but i've seen some other things saying oh that such and such is going to be here and such, and such. It doesn't seem to be as yeah. quiet as i was expecting it seems to have just carried on and why not you know if, if the market's there just continue to do it yeah. well I, w- I was heartened by the fact that there was still a lot of interest in doctor who okay maybe not the current era as it stands but there's lots of who fans there Lots of interest for Paul. He was there was big lines of of people uh, for the photo shoot for him and for uh, autographs and stuff. So I was really pleased that he was getting a lot of love from the fans, which was really nice. Yeah, it proves my point, doesn't it? That if they ever did a Paul McGann spin-off series, his series would probably be more popular than the new version. Well, I mean, <laughs> you just have to. I, I know I'm biased. I know I'm biased, but the. Uh, you just have a look at the the night of the Doctor Red Button event that happened in the fiftieth. That yeah. was even more popular for fans than the the day of the Doctor, as far as I was concerned. And mm. I know it depends if you're a fan or not. Well, I think Paul McGann. I think the movie has, has got mixed feelings people have about it, but I think he was the best thing in it. And he so oh, a yeah. waste of a Doctor. He didn't get a chance to develop the character because he did a, a great job on Big Finish. I'd love to see him more on on screen though. Would be great. Yeah, be interesting to see how, if that ever happened as well, how an audience who claimed that Peter Capaldi was too old yeah. would react to Paul McGann because he's sixty now, isn't he? Well, I have to say he looks good for his age, though. He's he looks uh, a very fit man. He looks after himself, and he looks fabulous. Unlike myself, obviously. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's still a bit of a rocker, is old McGann, isn't he? Really, he certainly Bless is. Him. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, exactly, but strangely, he's, he's three years older than me. <laughs> and I look like his dad. So that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, that, that's brilliant. That, but it's it's nice that he, he's still around. there and you know he's, he's he's out doing the conventions, and you can get the chance to meet to meet him, and he's 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 supporting the show. And it's it's interesting to say as well that um, you you said he come, he comes across as a little bit eccentric because I've never picked that up. Um, I've, I've never picked that up with him. But it certainly was never picked up in his stint as the doctor on the on the tv movie maybe yeah, that would have yeah. come out if he'd, if he'd been given the chance to do more doctor who but uh maybe it's just his age as well it could be that but it could be a liverpudlian thing uh, because him and tom are from liverpool and they're both a bit barking mad and 
and you have an element of that as well. So, (laughs) 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 for all the scousers that watch this, you won't be popular now, you know. I mean, that affectionately, I can say that. I mean, that's a nice thing, okay? So, yeah, just backtracking there, yeah. Very, but you better have pedal, pedal, pedal. No, that's great. Well, listen, listen, I'm glad you had a good time, and I'm glad you got to meet Paul McGann. Um, and there's, there's something for you to to tick off now haven't you you've, you've met yeah, him now yeah. you're happy now you're a happy bunny well i've met i've met four four to eight now so i'm happy with that that's a good thing at least so that's good yeah very good that's yeah. not bad but that's all you need yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was saying to my wife i have a memory of a friend of mine was a play at dundee rep um and david tennant one of his first jobs out of drama college was at dundee rep in a production of um Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf by Edward Albee. And he was in that play a tiny part. And I think I met him before he was famous, but I don't really remember because I met him through a friend of mine at the, at the production afterwards. So I may have met him as well, but I, I don't really remember. So maybe maybe I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> the, me- the memory cheats. It does, exactly. As I yes. mine used to say. But, yeah, oh, yeah. No, listen, that was great. Listen, and thanks very much for taking those pictures and thanks very much for, for coming and telling us all about it here on Visitations. Real, real treat that is. I love it when we're getting people coming yeah. in now to tell us about where they've gone and what they're seeing. It's really, really good. So thanks to Paul. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to please like the video. I hope you've enjoyed what Paul's had to tell us about his experience over at this uh, science fiction convention in Edinburgh. A day's worth of waiting around, basically. <laughs> basically, yeah. Yeah. The things we do as fans, it's outrageous. <laughs> it's outrageous. But no, thank you very much. Please don't forget to like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. We've got an awful lot of material out there for you on our playlist. Go and have a look at them all. Thanks again to Paul. Real pleasure to hear what you, about your adventures there. And thank you for watching. Until we see you again here on Who's Views, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>